internship here at Celebration and absolutely fell in love with this hospital. So from a graduate nurse, um, you transition into a registered nurse, and then I grew into leadership here. So I've been a nurse for about five years. As a nurse, you get to help the doctors take care of the patients. So if you come in and you're not feeling good, I'll give you your medicine. I get to help test with distracting you. Um, if you have an injury, we clean your injury and dress it. So if you need a band-aid or a wound, like wound care, we do all that fun stuff. Um, or we start your IV and things like that. So I get to do a lot of different things, but my main job is to help you feel better when you come into the emergency room. Great. So let's start by what would happen if they, someone came into the emergency room and who are the people that they would meet? What's the first step? So when you first walk in, as you can see, we're standing in our lobby. So when they come over here? Yep, we're going to come in through the front door here. And then my first friend is a security guard. So not everybody who works in a hospital is what we call critical or taking care of patients once they're at the bedside. Francis is a security guard who's kind of like the police officer of the hospital. And he helps make sure everybody is safe and everybody's in the right place. You know, if you walk in this door and you're lost, Francis is the first person you'll meet and he'll be happy to tell you where you're supposed to go. And then when you come in because of COVID, we've changed our process a little bit. We have a screening form, which we keep on this lovely clipboard here that asks you, are you coming in to see a doctor? What kind of symptoms you're experiencing today? And make sure that you haven't had any travel outside of Florida in the last 14 days. The second thing we do is we'll give you your parents a sticker that says Francis talk to them and screen them. And then we give you and your parents a mask. So we'll give the kiddos a very cute mask that has smiley faces on it. And then mom and dad will get a blue mask that matches Chet and I. The last thing you do before we register you as a patient is we check your temperature. This is an infrared thermometer. And you'll hear, I'll show you on this test. You hold it away from the forehead. It'll beep at you. And then it shows you your temperature on the back side here. And that's our screening process. So now we're going to move in to meet Ms. Chappelle. Hi, Ms. Chappelle. How are you? Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So Ms. Chappelle is a consumer access specialist. This is one of our administrative jobs here at the hospital. So like we said earlier, not everybody's at the bedside taking care of patients. Some of them are here to register you so that the nurses know you've arrived. Part of registering a patient is getting your name, your birthday, your address, your phone number, and then insurance information. So once she collects all that information, we print out a bracelet. And as you can see here, it has your name, your birthday, and then your account number. This account number links all of your medical records with your electronic medical record when you're here in the hospital. And that way, all your doctors know what happened when you were here in the emergency room. So we'll give you this bracelet. I'm going to put it on this test just to show. And again, this bracelet doesn't hurt. It's very flexible. And it fits just like that so everybody can see who you are when you're here in the emergency room. And then we get to move on through our lobby. Great. So then we get to the lobby and what's the next place you stop? So after you go through the lobby, Sometimes you have to stop in the lobby and wait. We try very hard to be very fast here in the emergency room so that you don't have to sit out here. But if you do, Miss Tess has made sure you have some fun things to do while you're waiting. After we leave the lobby, we're going to move into our triage room. And in our triage room is where we do your vital signs and we start to find out what brought you to the emergency room. Annika, what does triage mean? So triage is the process that we go through to find out your vital signs, your allergies, uh, what you're here for, how long it's been happening. So we get to ask you a lot of questions to put together the picture of why you're not feeling good today or how you got injured. So it's the place that it actually basically takes lots of measurements and mm -hmm. makes to see actually 
actually if you really are sick enough and you really need to be in the hospital or not. Absolutely. Okay. It's the starting point. Got it. And you also don't need to know all the answers. Your parents might be answering them for you. Don't be worried about, I have to answer all these questions when I go there. Your parents can help you out, and they'll be with you the whole time. Yep, and there's never any wrong answers, and there's never any bad questions. So we're going to show you around our triage room really quickly before we jump into what we do in the emergency room. I'm going to let Miss Tess start here for you guys. All right, so when you come to the ER with us, um, it's not just all getting medicine and all that stuff. We like to have fun, too. Um, so we have a lot of fun stuff here that you can play with while you're here. And if we do any procedures, you may be able to watch the iPad because some of our friends don't like watching what we do here just because if they're getting any procedure done, they would rather focus on that. And you may get a prize for anything that you do here if you're brave with us. Um, so as a child life specialist, I went to school to learn about all developmental levels and what kids understand at the developmental levels. So I understand how to best distract them and best get them through the procedures with different tactics and stuff. Great, thanks. What's next? So when we come into the triage room, one of the things that we measure and that we really need to know as a nurse in, or a doctor is how much you weigh. So right here we have our baby scale. So anyone who's too young to stand on their own or hold themselves up, we use the baby scale. That way they can lay down on it and we can get a safe, a safe measurement of how much they weigh. So we're going to show you we have our bear here and Tess is going to play mom for just a moment. So we turn our scale on and this is what we call zeroing the scale so that you know this is an accurate measurement and there's nothing else on there that's impacting how much you weigh. Once it shows all zeros, we're going to lay our patient down and then it will tell us our weight. So our bear weighs 0.23 kilograms. Oh, kilograms. Why is it measured in kilograms? So in healthcare, we use one universal measurement for weights, and we use kilograms. So all of our scales are locked. Some of you might be used to seeing pounds, and you can convert kilograms to pounds, but we use kilograms that way everyone knows the same measurement and nobody's ever confused. There's a big difference between two kilograms and two pounds. In the emergency room and in healthcare in general, we use your weight to measure how much medicine we give you. So that's why having one universal weight and knowing your weight when you first get here is really important to taking good care of you. Great. Thanks. What's next? So, next, this is, you know, your bag. Oh, the prizes. Have the, the prize box. The prize bag. There's all kind of really good goodies in there. There's goodies in there. We'll talk about that at the end, though. Next, we have our vitals machine. So vital signs tell us what your heart rate is, your oxygen level, your blood pressure, and your temperature when you first come into the emergency room. So sometimes when you're sick, you have a fever. And how we measure your fever, we have a couple different ways to do that. The first way is with a temporal thermometer. And then the second way is with an oral thermometer. And then we have all different cuffs that we'll show you when we, we demonstrate on this test how we do our actual vital signs. So the oral thermometer, does that go into my mouth? It does. So an oral thermometer goes under your tongue, and it's kind of like when you have a straw. You want to close your lips around the straw when you drink. We want you to put it under your tongue and then close your lips around the thermometer, and that way it checks your temperature. And what about the temporal thermometer? Where does that go? So temporal means... You have a, your temple here on your forehead, so it's a forehead thermometer. So we swipe it across your forehead, over your temporal artery, and then behind your ear. And that's how we measure your temperature. The next thing we have in our triage room is a sharps container. This container is where we put all of our pokey things, so needles or um, injections, things like that that we use to start an IV or give you medicine. We want to make sure everybody is safe, especially you as the patient. We don't want to leave anything sharp laying around. So we put it in a secure container, it falls back, and then nobody can touch it and get hurt. The next thing you'll see on our wall here is our call button. So if you need help while you're in your room, or you need Ms. Tess or I to come in and check on you, this big red button. Mm -hmm. Okay, we should be coming back on. 
apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes the stream can be a little bit tricky when we're working with that. Erin, can you explain to us why that sure. may happen? There are places in the hospital where the internet is not as strong because of all the other machines that is pulling this to use for patient care. So 